Welcome Bronco Nation to my game preview for Boise State versus BYU. This game is going to be on November 5th, 5 p.m. and is going to be on FS2. Now what a difference four games make. Because just four games ago, if we'd been doing this preview for Boise State versus BYU four games ago, it would have looked very, very different. Because four games ago, Boise State was coming off a loss to UTEP. The fan base was at its lowest in maybe I've ever seen them. And nobody really had any hopes for the season. They were looking ahead down the stretch to big games like Fresno State, San Diego State, Air Force, and especially BYU and going... I don't even know if Boise State's going to make a bowl game. On the other end, BYU was coming off a win against Utah State, had risen to number 16 in the rankings. They were riding high. They had games against Arkansas and Notre Dame on their schedule, and they looked like they could make a run at maybe not a CFP, although anything could have happened, but maybe at least a New Year's Six. Either way, hopes were running high in the BYU fandom. Well, the reversal has shifted completely. The courses of both these programs have completely changed. Since that time, Boise State has made some major changes for their program, to say the least, and has gone on a 4-0 run. BYU has hit a four-game losing streak, which is causing some to even question the current coaching regime at BYU. So now, in this game that a few weeks, uh, four games ago, you know, just a few weeks ago, Boise State versus BYU, you would have said BYU is a heavy favorite for sure. Boise State's actually favored in this one. They're given a 65.5% chance of winning, according to ESPN, and a 7.5-point uh, advantage, according to Vegas. Now, this is a huge game for a lot of reasons, not just because of the multiple swings that both these programs are heading in, but because this is a rivalry game. This is absolutely, without a doubt, a major rivalry game. I made a case in my video where I argued for the Boise State versus BYU game to be preserved, that it was one of the best rivalries in modern football. So, of course, it doesn't have you know the history of a lot of other games, a lot of other rivalries. But when you talk about the last decade, I think this is one of the best rivalries in college football. I definitely think it should be preserved. Kalani Sataki thinks it should be preserved. A lot of people on both sides think it should be preserved. I make a great case for it, which I'm not going to go into now. But definitely go watch that video. I put the link to it in the description. But this right now... And I do say for now, because again, there's a lot of people on both sides that would like to see this rivalry preserved. But for now, this is the last game in the series because the rest of the games have been canceled with Boise, with uh, BYU moving up to the Big 12. So this is the last time for both of these teams to make a statement in this game before it may or may not ever come back on the dock. I mean, Boise State versus TCU, that was a pretty big rivalry. It didn't even have as many games as this one did, but it that was a pretty big rivalry. And then TCU moved to the Big 12, and we haven't played them since. So this is a major, major game for Boise State as a rivalry, as a chance to show where they are moving as a program for BYU to reverse the spiral of this season. Both teams very, very motivated to win this game. Let's talk about it. We're going to go through the series history, key players for both teams, and then we'll go through keys to the game for Boise State, as well as a summary and score prediction at the end. Make sure, if you haven't already, that you like to subscribe. Uh, great Boise State, great Mountain West, great college football content in general on this channel. So let's get off the bat right here. Series history. Like we said, this is a rivalry. It's slightly lopsided here. Boise State earning the title over the top. 8-4 to four in this one. 8 wins, uh, 4 wins by BYU, 8 wins by Boise State. First game in the series, a 50-12 to 12 win by Boise State. The next game in the series, though, a lot closer. A 2004 win by Boise State that came down to the wire. Jared Zabransky at the helm, 28-27 to 27 win by Boise State. And then there was a little bit of a sabbatical there, a little bit of a time period that the Boise, neither team really played each other. And then in 2012, the series was renewed, and they have played every single year since 2012, 10 years straight since 2012. Uh, Boise State winning that first game in epic fashion. Fashion, though I would say for offensive fans, a little bit of a snooze fest, 7-6, to six, Canadian Bacon, Michael Atkinson returning a pick six for a touchdown, and then Boise State stopping a two-point conversion by BYU to win that game. Very uh, exciting game if you like defenses, but uh, a, a very interesting game nonetheless. And there has been a lot of interesting games in this series, which has been a great rivalry. In 2016, there was actually another 28-27 to 27 score. Again, Boise State winning that game. 
Uh, and then in 2020, of course, that was when BYU came in and finally got a major win in the series. They'd gotten wins before, but this was a major win for them in 2020 at Boise State. Definitely increased the rivalry faction the factor there with a 51-17 beatdown against Boise State. 2021, Boise State going up to Provo to return the favor a little bit, not in the beatdown fashion, but BYU was a highly ranked team there, a top 10 team. Boise State not having the best of seasons first year for the Andy Avalos and the new head coaching staff, but Boise State went up and they beat beat BYU 26 to 17 in a shocking fashion it was one of the best wins of the season for Boise State and that win definitely still stings for BYU fans today uh, and this is going to be an incredible game for both sides because BYU fans are, are BYU as a team definitely their fan base very motivated to come and win this game especially after the way Boise State went up and played them in 2021. So key players for this game, Boise State versus BYU. Uh, Boise State, I'm going to say three top three players for me. Number one is going to be George Halani. This is going to be a very run-focused offense, as it has been since uh, Dirk Carter took over. But it's also a BYU team that we'll look at later, gives up a lot of opportunities in the running game, especially recently. So George Halani is going to need to have a big game. He's had his best season so far since his freshman year. Uh, so his second best season overall in his career. He's at 600. 157 yards rushing, six touchdowns, a long 59. He has exploded on the scene. He finally looks fully healthy, fully energized. Like we haven't seen him really since his freshman year. He's dealt with a lot of injuries since then, but he looks like the, he looks like that freshman player. He looks better. He is running hard. He also has 136 yards receiving for three touchdowns. So he's very close here. I mean, he's only 343 yards away from getting to a thousand yard rushing. Definitely something achievable this year. And he needs to have a big game for Boise State. My second key player of the game is going to be Jail Skinner. He's had a, especially compared to last season, a little bit of a quiet year. Now, Jail Skinner doesn't do anything quietly, but when you compare him to maybe some of the other players on defense this year, and you compare him to last season where he I mean he was a highlight real machine definitely a little bit of a different take now he hasn't been kicked out of the game for any targeting uh, which he had a lot of issues with that last year but he's definitely had a little bit of a quieter year he's still second on the team in tackles just behind Shram 43 tackles second on the team uh, he's had two passes defended and an interception but again it's been a little bit of a quieter game well like a quieter season for JL Skinner well Boy State's going to definitely need him in this one BYU's strength is their passing game. Boise State's going to need to shut that down. The DB the is, of course, going to be key, but the, skip, the uh, safety over the top here in jail Skinner is going to be a huge opportunity for him to help shut down this passing game, especially the deep passing game, which Boise State has had a lot of issues with this year. You know, throughout the defense as a whole, they've been pretty consistent, and I, I believe they're, they are ranked number one overall uh, in passing defense there. But... They have also given up a lot of deep passes and a lot of games that, I mean, a lot of deep passes that shouldn't have been given up, uh, especially, I mean, even last week against Colorado State. So the safeties are going to be key in preventing those opportunities from BYU being able to gain momentum from a quarterback who has the arm to hit anybody anywhere on the field. Uh, my last key player of the game here, it's a guy who had a huge game last week, especially with Boise State maybe having some questions still there with Matt Locke's return. I'm hearing that it was a concussion-related issue so maybe he'll be able to be back in this game this week. Um, either way, though, whether he's there or not, this guy has got to find his way onto the field. He has got to have a huge game like he did last week. Divine Obachery, the defensive tackle, a guy I raved about in the preseason. We finally got to see on the field last week because of the injury there to Matlock. 14 tackles, 3 sacks on the year. 7 of those tackles and 3 sacks versus Colorado State. He had an incredible game. Boise State finally being able to dominate the line of scrimmage, get to the quarterback on a consistent basis. If they weren't sacking, which they did a lot of, they were at least pressuring him, which they have had issues with all year. Obituary, the difference maker, that is going to be big against BYU, where again, Jaron Hall is the offense for this team. Boise State is going to need to be able to apply consistent pressure against him to be able to go out and have a big game in this one. All right, so we've talked about Boise State. Let's talk real quick here about BYU. Well, we've mentioned him a bunch of times already, so we'll just jump off the bat here. Jaron Hall, he's the heart and soul of this offense. He was last year too, but I mean, they had at least had Algier, the, ball, the uh, bowling ball with knives on it. 
to really kind of bring them together as a team in a balanced attack. Well, not this year. They've really struggled to put together consistent, dominant rushing games, but the passing game has had a great season. Uh, maybe not the last couple of games, but overall, it's had been a great year for Jaron Hall passing-wise. He's, he's on pace to have his best year ever, 2,245 yards, only a few hundred yards away. I mean, less than that, I think. Uh, I think he might only be like 100 yards away from being his best season overall, and he still has a lot of games left in the year. Uh, he's completed for 65.6% of his passes. He's thrown for 21 touchdowns, which is a career best. Previous career best, 20 touchdowns, and he's only thrown for three interceptions this year. So he's gotten the job done through the air. Now, the last two games, however, not been the case. That's how teams have been able to beat BYU. BYU against Liberty and against ECU. So, you know, Liberty, my second team, I love my Flames, but, I mean, these are not world beaters. These are not Power 5 programs. Liberty with a very, very good defense. But, again, you know, they're not going up against SEC teams. And Jaron Hall not able to get it done under 190 yards passing against both of those teams, 144 yards versus ECU last week. So 187 versus uh, Liberty and 144 versus East Carolina, who I would argue is significantly worse than Liberty and only 144 yards versus East Carolina. So something's going on with that passing game. He needs to turn some things around if they want to make a comeback here, make a chance to end the season on the right note and get a win here against Boise State. Uh, I'm the next key player for me, and it's someone who kind of exploded a little bit onto the scene and could have a big impact on this offense moving forward, though maybe not the case last week as far as the end result, but definitely exciting to see what he's bringing to the table. And I'm probably going to butcher this name a little bit because I'm not familiar with it because he hasn't seen much action this season, but it's the running back Lopini Katoa. I think I got that right. BYU fans, you know, correct me in the comments section. But 278 yards rushing, two touchdowns this season. So really not much of an impact. But last week, he got the start at running back versus ECU. 20 rushes for 116 yards, 5.8 yards per carry, and a touchdown. Now, you know, this wasn't like, you know, he was bursting off massive runs. He had a long of 24. But he was able to get yardage pretty consistently here for BYU. If he can be do that against Boy State, if he can do that against the rest of the teams on this schedule for BYU, that is going to be a huge boost for a team that has struggled to consistently get yards on the ground this season uh, to back up Jaron Hall. So linebacker, uh, sorry, third player of the game here for overalls with linebacker Ben Bywater. The BYU defensive line has really, really struggled. So they are going to need assistance for, against this mighty Boy State rushing attack from their linebackers, for even from their secondary probably. But this is a guy who can have a big impact for the defense. 69 tackles so far this season. One sack, one pass defended, two interceptions. He's basically been the whole defense here for BYU. Last week against ECU, he was the whole defense for BYU. 11 tackles versus East Carolina. This is a guy who's built 6'3", 230 pounds, and he looks like a linebacker. This is a guy who can get it done in the defense, and he's going to need to have a huge game against Boise State that's got a little bit of a four-headed rushing attack right now, and we'll talk about that in the keys to the game. So moving on to the keys to the game here. So number one key to the game for Boise State is to shut down the running game. Now, I've, I've raved and raved and raved about Hall and how he is the offense, but if he becomes the offense, the sole offense, BYU struggles, and they, they did that last season too. Well, the way that Boise State beat BYU last year is they shut down the running game. And I said this year, I didn't think that this season was going to be quite as successful for BYU. A lot of people were really, really high on BYU. But I said they are not. They don't have Algier. They don't have their top running back. The guy who really kind of, when he had off games last year, BYU lost. And they lost, they had off game against Boise State, and he lost. BYU this year, not with a consistent dominant running game, has struggled when Hall has been said, okay, you, you, you're our entire offense, you got to go out there and pass. Now, Boise State, like I said, they give up some opportunities in the passing game, but they've been pretty consistent overall. So if they can shut down the running game and force BYU to go through the air, solely through the air, I think that Boise State can have a lot of success in this one in making BYU uh, one-dimensional. My other team, Liberty, did a great job against that. They forced BYU to only 71 rushing yards. Remember, this is a Boise State defense is coming off of a three-yard performance allowed versus Colorado State. So, uh, rushing yards allowed versus Colorado State. So, Liberty holding BYU to 71 rushing yards, which equaled, which ended up 
because the passing game became the focus. Only 187 yards passing for Hall, and he went 16 out of 34. So when they were forced into the air on a consistent basis, especially when with pressure applied and having to go to more of the short mid-passing game, that is where Boise State can dominate in this field because, again, a short mid-passing game, they're pretty consistent. It's those long, broken plays that they need to not allow. But overall, if they can take away the running game, make BYU one-dimensional in this one, it's going to put a lot more pressure on this passing game, which has not been as far as uh, being able to take over and win games, something that BYU has been able to rely on solely to go out there and perform. All right, second big key here, and it's going to be kind of the reverse. So focus on shutting down the running game for BYU. Attack the running game. Attack the ground here. Attack the defense through the running game for Boise State. Shouldn't be much of a prompter here. I mean, Boise State doesn't really need me saying this for them to do it because this is their offense this year. Even last week where they did a lot more passing, they are a run-first offense this week. Now, this needs to make sure that this is the focus for Boise State versus BYU. I know they really tried to bring Green's arm into play last week, try a lot of different things, and that's good. Boise State needs to continue to add that skill set to the offense. But BYU's biggest weakness right now is the run, especially that defensive line. They allowed 300 yards rushing versus Liberty, who... I, I love my Flames, and they've had a great season this year, 7-1 in the AP poll, top 25. But they haven't been a crushing attack on the ground. They've been a very consistent team on the ground. Day-Day Hunter, the transfer from Hawaii, has had a great year for Liberty. The running game has definitely been very good. But this was the first. They've not been going out and putting up 300 yards on opponents. Boise State's done that twice this season. That has kind of been the focus here with Dirk Cutter because they are a run-focused team. But Liberty is, is not. Liberty is very much a balanced attack, putting in the run and the pass, and they were able to put up 300 yards rushing against BYU. That really shows you the weaknesses and opportunities that are on this defensive line. And Daley Hunter, by the way, went for over 213, 200 yards, over 200 yards, 213 yards total um, against BYU. So there are opportunities here when you're looking at two running backs, Halani and Genty, and also the addition of Noah, who's kind of come onto the scene here as well. Boise State has a three-headed rushing machine, a four-headed monster, if you include Green's legs into the game, that can really, really, really take advantage of this weakness here by BYU. Third big key, focus on the short to mid-range passing. The short to mid-range passing game. You know, Boy State needs to make sure that they're run focused because that's where the weakness is. That's where they have found their strength when they've built momentum on the ground and then allowed the defense to be worn down for the passing game to kick in later. That's when Boy State's been most successful. Boy State needs to make sure they're not trying to make Green a pocket passer. They need to make sure they're not trying to force the deep ball. But they need to also make sure, while focusing on the run game, that they are using that new ability that Green has shown he has to, to get the short and mid-range passing game involved. Green has shown, and Boise State's wide receivers have shown, when you take the run game, you make it a focus, make the defense have to cover that, that Green can be very, very effective on the short kind of bullet pass, you know, 20 yards or so passing game. And Boise State's wide receivers, who are some great slot receivers, are able to get out there and make those plays. Green needs to make sure that he's not focusing on the deep pass because that's where he gets into trouble. That's where he got into trouble against Oregon State. That's where he almost got into trouble against Colorado State. Three near picks, every single one of them was on a deeper passing play. He needs to be focusing on the short passes. The tight ends got some great tight ends here in Smith and Hopper. Short passing plays to the wide receivers. Now, you know, obviously... Keep the deep pass as part of your offense. Boy State, once you suck them in with the running game and the short passing game, there'll be opportunities deep. McAllister will find his way out there. You know, Riley Smith will find his way out deep. There'll be an opportunity to throw the deep ball and make that part of the offense. But the focus needs to be on the run, key two, and the short mid-passing game. That's how Liberty destroyed BYU. I, I don't know if anybody checked the scores here, but Boy, but Liberty won that game 41-14, to absolutely crushed BYU, and it was because of the short passing game. That's how they were able to pick apart this defense. And this is a, this is a, with a Liberty quarterback who had an amazing game. I mean, they made, BYU's defense made him look like a god, but he has not been consistent. He has not had a great year so far for Liberty. Third string quarterback, by the way, we've had two injuries to our starters. So the third string quarterback for Liberty has not had a great season so far, but he looked incredible against BYU because of the short to mid-range passing. 24 out of 29, so he completed 24 out of 29 passes for 247 yards, 
average per completion, only 8.5 yards. That was the short passing game. It was very, very effective. Got the ball into the hands of the playmakers, just like Boise State can do, and then just picked them apart. And then there were opportunities to throw the deep ball, which he was able to hit as well. Uh, two touchdowns and an interception, but he looked great because of the emphasis on the short to mid-range passing. Now you take Boise State, who has a better run offense than Liberty overall. You take Boise State, whose run offense is better. And you take a quarterback who overall has been more consistent than what Bennett has done so far this season for Liberty. And you take the same game plan and you implement it. I expect to see another, if implemented correctly, another big offensive performance being able to come in here, implement these three keys, Shut down the run game, so take away, make BYU one-dimensional, force it into your great secondary who's played really good, other than the deep passes allowed. Attack the ground, and then focus on the short to mid-range passing game, and that, I think, is a perfect combination for success for Boise State to end this rivalry on the right note. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about summarizing and overall and giving you a score prediction. You can kind of see I'm leaning towards, if Boise State does everything right here, leaning towards a win here, but let's talk about whether or not that's going to happen, because BYU is very, very motivated, like I said, to win this game. They've lost four straight, which is almost worse for Boise State. I almost wish they'd beaten East Carolina last week so that they kind of arrested the slump a little bit, maybe not as hungry coming into this one, maybe a little bit more confident coming into this one. So Boise State could maybe take advantage of that overconfidence a little bit. I don't know if they would call themselves overconfident, but they are desperate right now. I mean, you are playing against a dog that is backed in the corner and has nothing to lose. I mean, BYU right now has nothing to lose, so you could see anything against Boise State um, on, on November 5th. I mean, this is a game that could go any way you want to think about it. You know, and so like I said, Sataki needs this win. He needs this rivalry win to restore faith in the fan base. I don't think he's going to be fired after the season. He had, did a great job with them last year, even though it didn't end the way they wanted to. I know there's been a lot of disappointing seasons, high hopes and crashed hopes here for BYU. I, I don't think this is win or lose at all, but it's definitely leaning in that direction it, over the next season or so. If he doesn't restore some faith in the fan base, getting a win against Boise State would be a big way to do that. And it's a rivalry game. Rivalry games, anything can happen. BYU on a downward slide right now, but they could play like a top five team, you know, a top 10 team from last year or the top 16 team that they were before this slide against Boise because that's what rivalries do. They bring out the best in each team and they uh, little tiny weaknesses, little tiny momentum opportunities become huge gaps in the game if allowed to exploit. On the other hand, Boise State, their strength matches BYU's weakness. And Boise State is desperate to preserve their home field advantage. They did not do that last year. It was a major, major issue for this team that they've addressed. That they said, this is a focus for us. We didn't accomplish our number one goal, which was to protect the blue. We're going to do it this year. And they've done it despite a lot of odds against them. Uh, you know, you, you lose to UTEP. You lose your offensive coordinator. Your starting quarterback leaves. The season looks like it might be over. And you have some very tough games on the blue. Boise State comes in against rivals. Boise State comes in, does amazing things, and they have preserved their wins against the blue. They have protected the blue this year. And that is a big part because of you, Bronco Nation. Boise State's fandom right now is more inspired, more passionate, and more full of it. Just the pure joy and excitement of being a fan than I've seen them in a long time. This is a great time to be a Boise State fan. And Bronco Nation at the Boise State home games is just rocking. I mean, they're causing false starts. They're causing delays of games. I mean, that has always been the Boise State way to make it hard to play at home. But it is even harder this year than maybe some games in the last few seasons for Boise State. A lot of near, a lot of sellouts. Boise State has been absolutely crushing. Bronco Nation has been absolutely crushing it for Boise State at home. So that is a tough, tough environment. If this game was at BYU, I'd say, you know, with everything, everything I've talked about for BYU before, all of that coming together, they might be able to pull off this upset. But those chances go down a lot when you have to play at Boise State with the momentum that Boise State has. I mean, Boise State is rolling right now. They have all the energy, all the momentum, the fan base is behind them. It just seems to be setting up here for Boise State to win. And then there's the other fact that BYU is leaving. Boise State's not ending this rivalry. BYU is ending this rivalry. They're going to the Big 12 and they're saying, you know, we want to open up our schedule to other teams and to other opportunities. We're bigger and better than you now. We don't need you. We're gone. 
And there's, I mean, that's more the university saying that. There's a lot of individual players. Like I said, Sataki wants to see this rivalry continue. Which is not the same thing that Gary Patterson said. He said, we're done. We don't want to play them ever again when TCU left. So, you know, there is interest on both these teams to play. But the impression overall that Big 12, especially the athletic department, is saying, we, don't, we, we want to play bigger teams. You're not big enough for us now, Boise. We're going to move on. That should be some locker room material right there for Boise State to say, we are going to show them that we deserve to be in the conversation for expansion. We deserve to be in the conversation for top teams in the nation, especially in the group of five, but in the country in general, to be part of that discussion of the teams that are elite in college football. And Boise State, we're building back to that. We are building towards that. That's what this game means, ending it on the right note. I, to this day, still it, it still hurts my heart and I, I absolutely hate them for this that we lost to TCU the last game that we played them in 2011 last game we lost to TCU at home and then we never played them again and I, I hated TCU before that and I hate them even more now and it you, you just you know you every time I see TCU play I just think about the fact that they beat us the last time that we played them I don't want to think that about BYU I want to say well they don't want to play us because we beat them too many times, you know. Oh, they don't want to play us. Well, well, okay, fine. We, you know, we own the win, the last win. You guys ever want to come back and get yourself a W? You can schedule us. Boise State needs to end this rivalry on the right note. Hopefully, it continues. I really want it to continue. Again, watch my video where I talk about why it should continue. But either way. Boise State has one more guaranteed game in this series. That is happening this weekend. A chance for Boise State to end this game on the right note. I'm predicting a big win here by Boise State. Their offense going up against BYU's defense, the strength of Boise going up against a weakness here for BYU that the, that everyone is mentioning. I mean, this is an obvious weakness here that Boise State can exploit, especially on the run game. And Boise State's defense coming up big in this one, especially in the second half. I think that early on, maybe a little bit closer, um, BYU getting at least 27 points overall, but Boise State having a big offensive night, 42 by the Broncos, 42 to 27. Boise State winning is my final prediction for this game. Either way, it's going to be a great time. Boise State, the blackout, a chance for uh, Boise State fans to watch a great rivalry and maybe a historic game if this doesn't happen again for a long time here in the future chance to end this rivalry on the right note. Let's help get our team this win. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and as always, go Big Blue!